my very first YouTube video um, so welcome to the workshop of the Jack Pine Savage what I'd like to show you today is my really super cheap LED lights that I have put together for nothing um, according to my calculations those two lights together are drawing 40 watts and excuse my mess but you can see it lights it up quite nicely uh, this side over here is very, very well lit. Um, not sure what the wattage draw is on this one, but it's nowhere near 40 watts, that I'm sure. Um, these were made from the backs of LCD TVs that were thrown in the junk. As, as you can see, there are, on this one, there's one LED that's not lit. That's because that LED was burned out, so I simply bypassed it. Um, there's a couple of them on that one. I don't know if you can really see that in this video. Um, that one, they're all working. There's a couple of them that are a little weak, but uh, they all work. So, very easy to do. And uh, in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. Thanks. Okay, so here's how you put the lights together. Um, this there's actually two different TVs that I've got here. Um, neither one of them had enough diodes by themselves so that I could set it up. So I wound up having to uh, put them all in one circuit in series. Because in order to do this, the, the diodes have to be in one, one circuit. And there has to be enough of them to use up the voltage. And basically the way that you do it is, if you look here, we have the AC line coming into a bridge rectifier that I scavenged out of some electronic part and then it goes from there into this smoothing capacitor and the main thing to remember about this is you have to have a big enough capacitor um, the microfarads don't matter but the voltage it has to be able to handle uh, the voltage that comes out of the rectifier and typically I've been getting um, 196 volts DC out of the rectifier uh, exactly why that happens, I don't know. I'm sure there's some techno geeks on YouTube that could explain that. But you get 110 volts going in, but 196 coming out. Uh, smooth this uh, with the smoothing capacitor to uh, smooth out the signal. And then on the negative side, you hook up a resistor. And you want something that's going to handle around 10 watts. Um, I don't think there's that much electricity or wattage flowing through the system because I can run this thing for hours and it's still it gets a little warm but I can pick it up and hold it even after it's been on for over an hour so it's not going to get any hotter than that but uh, then the circuit from the positive side of the capacitor goes to um, the positive side of the start of the first run of lights and basically the way it works the circuit runs down through the LEDs comes back goes across to the other set of LEDs comes back comes out goes through my through this plug here and then from there I've got a long line set up to go over here to the other one and it basically does the same thing the positive side comes in here and let me get this one. okay it comes in here and then it just follows, goes down, back, down, back, down, back, comes around, comes down and back, and just makes the whole loop, and then winds up back to, through the resistor, to the out part, output, or the negative side of the uh, bridge rectifier. And that's it. Uh, the biggest trick about this is making sure that you've got enough diodes uh, to be able to handle the voltage. And basically what I do, you, know, you figure you got 196 volts DC at the bridge rectifier. The diode's like 4 volts about each. So you divide that up, it gives you roughly 50 diodes. If you get anywhere in that ballpark, you should be fine. Um, and you, you can control how bright or dim it is just by the, the ohmage of the resistor. This one here is actually just a 33 ohm 10 watt resistor. And that seems to work really good. Let me go ahead and plug it in so that you can see it here on the bench. And see that it works. Um, so, yeah, there's the lights. Um, nice and bright. And it provides lots of lighting. I made this all out of junk. It cost me nothing. A um, little bit of money maybe in the heat shrink. And that's it. Um, so, super cheap. 
and very efficient, very bright. I love it. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say um, about these capacitors is that these these capacitors, I mean, they can hold a lot of voltage. They you know, must be very, very careful. Uh, if you want to do this, I will stress that you are doing this at your own risk. Um, you know, there are some very simple things to remember, and that's that every time when you're building this system, if you're not happy with the, what's going on and you need to do some more wiring and you've charged this capacitor, which I, you plug in the, the plug, it's charged immediately. You need to take um, a screwdriver and just short out across there. Uh, you'll get a nice big snappy spark, but it's much better to go across the screwdriver than go across your body because uh, you've probably heard the warnings about not messing with the backs of TVs because of the capacitors uh, that can store enough voltage to kill you. Well, guess what? That's where this came from. So uh, you must be very, very careful with that. Uh, just wanted to put in that warning. If you want to do this, great. Just be very careful. Oh, and the other thing is make sure that you do not get the polarity wrong on the capacitor. There is a negative side and a positive side on the capacitor. Now, I had the experience last year, I accidentally put just a little dinky capacitor, a little 16 volter in backwards, and I, when I powered up the circuit, it sounded like a 22 rifle going off. So, uh, a capacitor that size, uh, I would not want to be near it if you hook it up backwards. But if you keep those two things in mind, uh, keep it discharged anytime you're working on the system and make sure you get the polarity right when you first set it up, you should be fine. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye.